Well, hello, hello, my dear viewers, my dear friends. Welcome back to the channel. And today, after a long week's break, we have chapter 980 of One Piece of its name, Fighting Music. I hope you all had a fantastic week and weekend. And I hope you are ready for some more One Piece. And I gotta say, on the aftermath of my Wano Fights video, I was not expecting one of those fights to be realized this soon. Yes, I am talking about Kid versus a Pooh skirmish at the end of this chapter, although I obviously do not believe that will be the end of said skirmish, but it is a beginning and it will probably lead to something. But we will get to a Pooh next. Please, if you enjoy my content, and One Piece in general, please leave a like, a comment and subscribe to the channel. I am trying to achieve 50 subscribers before the 23rd of July. So it would mean a lot to me if you could help with that. So without further ado, let's go to One Piece. Now, the cover story, it's going exactly as we imagined it was going, as I've been telling for a few covers ago, ever since we kind of discovered that the one that Godi saved was not Chiffon, but Lola. So yeah, Lola's gone like typical Lola, I like you marry me, so sadly this completely disproves the theory that Lola ended up marry, marrying Lucky Roo from the Red Hat Pirates. Sadly, but I mean... It never had much basis to go on that theory, did it? So, okay, it's cool, it's all in the family. Next cover, probably they, probably Pound arrives to like give his blessing. The next one they get married and the last one. So the next one will be the 28th, then we have 29th and the 30th cover page. Maybe it, it will be all of them sailing in, uh, in either the Lola's Pirates ship or the, the other ship that, um, that Capon led to, to Dressrosa, which I don't remember what it is, which ship it is, if it's a Tart or if it's like a Navy ship that he outfitted. No, not a Navy ship, it's another cruise ship that he outfitted. I don't actually remember, but they might, they might use the Lola's Pirates ship, if it's still the Rumbar Pirates old ship. So, anyway, this cover story is nearing its end, I believe, so... Eh. It's okay, it was an okay cover story, so anyway, let's move forward. We get some more Oshiruku bashing here, and Luffy just loses it, like... After last chapter, like, we all knew this would happen. Honestly, I am surprised that things are starting to go haywire so quick. I was not expecting this, to be honest. But, um, I mean, given how last chapter ended, there really was no other way this could have gone. The only way that this could have gone different is if someone other than Zoro got there and was like, Okay, calm down. Luffy. But no, since Zoro was the only one that arrived and he only added more to the fire. He only added more wood to the fire. So yeah, Luffy goes, pops, a, pops an elephant gun on top of some goon's heads and all hell breaks loose. Like, a fight commences, we see Kid and his crew members just realizing what Luffy's doing. And then we see Zoro getting the tower, which is also pretty funny, like, Zoro arrives. First, first, Zoro didn't got lost, or if he did, he found his way over really quickly. Secondly, he starts berating Luffy over just having to cause a scene, while he's the guy who just cut a freaking tower in half just to prove a point 
And he doesn't seem to be wielding Enma. That's something I only realize now because the first the first engraving, I mean, it does look, you know, he is using Enma. It's just that the panel doesn't have any of the any of the details on the on the sword blade. I mean, I guess that's that's okay. That's the swords themselves are a bit too tiny to make the details. <clears throat> but we see one that looks to be Sandaki Tets with the, the sort of flamey design. But then Sandaki Tets is the one that he has over his shoulder, not the one that's down. So that's why I thought he wasn't using uh, Enma. But after looking at this image, you see the guard pattern of the like three little circles that is Enma so yeah Kid and Killer are just like what a bunch of idiots so yeah Luffy explains the situation or like oh if that's the case then let's let's kill them all so yeah Queen starts realizing that something's wrong and it's Apu that starts putting the pieces together he realizes who they are uh, that they are, of course, Luffy and Zoro, because he knows them. And he communicates that to Queen. Queen then leaves out something like, Damn it, they broke out of prison. Like, wasn't he aware that, they, that there was something wrong in Udon already? Because I remember, I distinctly remember that a few chapters back, when he was talking with uh, Babanuki, I guess, yes, Babanuki, that when he hanged out the phone, he was like, a oh, bunch of idiots. And I thought, oh no, wait, was it, wasn't the Roach who said that? Oh, it might have been a Roachy. Now that I think about it, it might have been a Roachy. Because, yeah, because a Roachy already knew that they had escaped from, from Kanjuro. So he didn't share the information with uh, with the beast pirates. Ah, yeah, no, because because I found this segment really really weird because because I in my head I thought well but didn't you already knew that Bavanuki was kind of lying to you? Apparently he didn't. But yeah, so the next. The, one of the most interesting parts of this chapter, the chapter itself is, I mean, it's, by all means, not a bad chapter. It's just, it's not that of an advancing chapter. Like, we don't get a lot of development. Like, we get the beginning of the fight, you know, from, from here on out, everything goes, really. Everything's going to hell, really. But the thing that makes it is one of the money shots, as I like to call them. One of the money shots is this panel of Queen telling he's going to erase someone from the Toby Ropu. Now, there's two interpretations possible here. The first one, it's the one that I went right out of the gate with, is that he knows about the S. Drake. However, the other interpretation could be simply due to the fact that Kaido launched the challenge that if the Tobiropo are able to get back Yamato, he'll give them a chance to challenge a, a calamity of their choosing. So, both of these options are viable. Queen might have discovered the Ezra's true intentions and the aims to deal with him as soon as he can or is just winging on the on the challenge which I don't exactly know how he would have known about the challenge because he's always been there so unless like Bao Huang or something went and told him or any of the other calamities for that matter I don't really know how he would have known about the challenge. So, my money is all on the first hypothesis, that Queen has somehow discovered about the S. Drake, and he's planning on 
off him off during the golden festival here. So, and he offers the empty seat of the Toby Ropu to anyone who's able to catch Zoro and, Lu and Luffy. So everyone gets excited, the gifters start going bananas on it, and I just love how the waiters, and possibly their pleasures as well, how they just... Because it's something that we don't really see in, in anime or anything, because normally the, the fathers, the, the, the low rank soldiers, are always like, Oh, let's go, we can take them, it's okay, and you have this main character who's severely overpowered in comparison to them. But here we have the pleasures and, and the waiters just like, Ah, we don't even have a chance unless we're a gifter, so ah, let's, let's just drink and stop chugging their mugs around. It's so funny, like, they straight out realize that they don't have a chance and they just said, okay... Let's drink, we don't have a chance, leave that to the gifters, <laughs> they'll, they'll, they'll get it. So yeah, it was really, really fun. Again, as I said, um, I don't know if it was if it was on the fights video or the, the, the review video before that, I don't really think that the calamities are going to be defeated, and I don't really think that even after the S. Drake's defection, which will happen during the, the arc at some point. He will join the alliance in my in my idea. I don't really think that the structural hierarchy of the Beast Pirates will change. There will be no new calamity out of the blue, and there will be no new Toby Ropu out of the blue. Because it's as I said, at this stage of Wano. Oda has everything in, in place. Like all the chess pieces are on the board. As I, as, I, as I said, you have the Alliance on one side and you have Kaido and company on the other. Like, there's, there has been a change from the Alliance to Kaido in the form of Kanjiro, and there will probably be one from Kaido to the Alliance, that's T.S. Drake. One of the reasons why I don't expect Yamato to be a quote-unquote good guy is that exact change. Like, the Alliance lost a member, Kaido and company will lose a member. So, so, sort of an equivalent exchange of swords. So, to balance things out. So, I don't think that any of the gifters will will be able to ascend to Toby Ropu. I don't think, even if the Toby Ropu are to be defeated, I don't expect them to be put out of action just like that. And yes, probably... The time when Queen decides to off the S. Drake, if it's indeed the S. Drake he plans to off, I believe that that will spark a fight and the S. Drake's quote-unquote betrayal will be exposed and he'll change to the Alliance. So we are possibly looking at, a, at an Allosaurus, Brachiosaurus's fight in our hands, which, uh, let me tell you, would be pretty, pretty amazing. I would enjoy it very much. So yeah, Luffy and Zoro start running, and they get surrounded by a lot of gifters. Like, we see some of these we have seen before, during the, the presentation of the, of the groups, when the festival began. We see the giraffe lady again, and the, the crab dude with the, the pincers... On, uh, on his back, the gorilla lady that is fused with the gorilla. Man, these smile users. I can already imagine how the anime will deal with this part. We'll see, like, all these gifters, like, will have a center, a center frame with their name on it. Just you wait. But then starts the second money sequence of this chapter, which is a poo. And him fighting again. Like, we haven't seen Apu fighting ever since Shabani. And even then, it was just a smidget of what he could do. Something that I was meant to, to go and check before doing this review, but I haven't, was his first run-in with Kizaru, the, the one I'm mentioning. Because... 
What I think about his, his powers, and it seems to be so, whenever he makes a specific sound effect, that sound effect becomes what happens. So, the first one, the, the, the sort of boop, like, it looks like a punch. However, I don't think that boop would be the, the specific sound effect for a punch. What I think is, boop is kind of like if you went boop, but because of his powers but, and because of the sound waves, the sound dispersions, that multiplies the effect somewhat. And then the slash, we see Zoro being cutted whilst there's no blade, but we see the slash sound effect being made by him. Some people say it's according to the instruments, and that could be it, because we see when he does the boop, his arm sort of dislodges, his hand sort of dislodges from the rest of the arm at around here, the knuckle. So, and some strings appear sort of like a guitar. Then we have its head that's like the, um, I don't know, the plate. I know how we call them in Portuguese, we call them plates, I think. But I don't know the name in English. Those things you have on the drums usually. And that does the slash sound. And then he has the drum, the chest drum, that does the big explosion. So, with the boom. So, his power set is really, really interesting. And I think that we could discover more about it in the next chapter. That is not coming next week. Because One Piece will be on a break. So yeah, it's a big explosion. Luffy is taken completely by surprise by that explosion. And they start running again. So yeah, Zoro and Luffy start running again. Zoro realizes that they are not in the best situation right now. Because, well, of course, they are already taking damage. And if they keep taking damage, how are they supposed to survive until the end? to fight Kaido. So yeah, I mean we see we see an olden an olden type gifter with a wolf smile. There has been a lot of wolf smiles. Like there's this guy, there was a guy back in uh, in Zo that transformed his hand into a wolf's mouth. Like I don't know if that guy's gonna show up again. I think that was an early concept for gifters. Because the first gifters we saw, Sheepsheed, uh, Sheep that guy, and there was one with, that transformed his arm into like the crap pincer. I believe those are early concepts for gifters. And then Oda changed them to the gifters we now know, the ones that really have animal parts. Like somewhere, like Oldham, like Batman, like the gazelle man whose legs are literally gazelles like and I believe that those who transform their hands they were kind of early concepts of the gifters and they are not gonna show up again because we haven't seen any sort of gifter like that in a while I don't know if sheep sheet will appear again honestly I kind of doubt it because I, I think sheep sheet was a one-off thing so, these are the gifters now. It was something that I realized a while ago, but I just wanted to bring it out. And Luffy just goes and bites. I believe he bites the wolf, but it looks like a crocodile, honestly. But it is the wolf, because the wolf is the one that's near him. So... So it is the wolf, it doesn't make sense. We have a very cool looking chameleon lady, like there, there's a whole chameleon and then the lady is just torso up from like the chameleon's back. Like, I don't even, there's, then there's this lady with a sight. She's just yielding this massive sight and she's sort of like hunchback. We don't know what animal she is, but she looks really cool as well. And Oda has listened to our prayers and the long coat is back.
He brought the long coat back. God damn it, he did. I'm so happy. Yeah, Zoro and Luffy ditched the, the disguises. As we already knew, these disguises weren't gonna last all that long. So yeah, the long coat is back. The normal Zoro attire is back. And yeah. And we reach the end of the chapter where Apu is preparing to like unleash a massive attack. His subwoofer, he calls it. But he doesn't have a chance to do it because Kid arrives and goes all punk Gibson in his face. So yeah, uh, we have what I believe to be the beginning of the Kid vs. Apu fight in here, in our hands. Because I don't think that Apu will be weak enough to just be done by that attack. So what I think is that next chapter, which will hit not next week on 31st of March, of May, March, poof. If we were still in March, my god, no, but thankfully we are in, in end May, close to June. Thank god for that. Uh, so yeah, the next chapter will hit, will hit one week after that, so on the 7th of June, as stated by the manga, the manga plus chapter. So yeah, this chapter, as I said, it's it was an action-packed chapter, but it wasn't a very narratively developed chapter. There was no advan no big advancements. There were some things thrown here and there that will become payoffs later on, like the king, the the queen, stating that he'll off some one of the Toby Robu. Uh, the Kid versus the Pooh fight, which I believe will have a closure next chapter. Oda needs to start doing fights. He has not been doing fights in Wano at all. The only semblance of a fight we had was Sanji versus Page One, and he cut that out. So, very interesting to see a Pooh being developed as a character and his powers, not really as a character, but as a character in terms of his powers being shown. That's he's one of the most interesting members of the of the supernovas power wise. Honestly to me, like a Pooh Hawkins and um, well possibly Kid, but Kid we always knew it was magnetism. The only thing left for Kid is for his devil fruit knight to be revealed, which I think it hasn't yet. I think. Hold on. Quick Google search to the use this Captain Kid wiki. Yes, so no. His Devil Fruit is yet to be revealed in name or appearance. So yeah. He only has three named attacks in canon. Repel, Punk Rothen and Punk Gibson. Oof. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, but uh, I'm really looking forward for Apu because Apu and Hawkins were two of the ones that I was most interested on when Devil Fruits and Powers are concerned because the others you can pretty much guess. Like, I guessed Laws not pretty much out of the bat, but I went with the theories at the time there was some sort of medical slash operation type fruit. Kids' is magnetism is obvious. Uh, Killer and Zoro don't have a fruit. Luffy we know. Drake was a dinosaur. He was pretty much there already. Then we have Bonnie that we know it's some sort of age-altering fruit. Possibly, probably, most likely Paramecia. Then we have um, Rouge, which is I think the damage he receives is converted into mass, so possibly the most, the bigger the damage he takes, the larger he is able to grow. We don't know, we don't know yet. And then we have Capon with the Shiro Shiro no Mi, the capsule fruit, which is also a dead giveaway. And yeah, Apu and Hawkins really were the ones that I was looking for the most to be revealed in terms of fighting abilities. Hawkins got a little bit of that at the beginning. 
Yeah, we had that fight. I forgot. Yeah, we had that fight. But that was shown. That was kind of shown. So, yeah. I really hope we get to see Hawkins a little bit more. If not on the Alliance side, and maybe on a last desperate attempt to be on Kaido's side. We don't know. He was left a bit, you know, he was left a bit in the dirt when Law escaped prison. Possibly with the help of Diaz Drake. So, yeah. Hawkins is a guy... Who reads the cards he reads the odds and he's like okay so if it's more advantages for me to join this side then i'll do it if it's not well shucks but yeah we'll see it was this chapter i don't really have much else to say about it we got the coat back <laughs> i guess i guess this will be the name of this chapter we got the long coat back forget fighting music forget the name of the chapter this is the name of the, this will probably be the name of the video. We got the long coat back. No, it will not be because otherwise this video already, this video will get no views whatsoever. So <laughs> let's not make it more difficult on ourselves. So yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you have, please leave your comments in the section, in the comment section down below. I do not know how to speak sometimes. Leave a like, subscribe for more, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Or if you're only here for One Piece, I'll see you in two weeks time, because next week there won't be any One Piece related content. That doesn't mean that there will be no content on Monday. I just don't know what I'll have ready for Monday, if anything at all. I have some ideas, but they are some pretty, you know, uh, how do you call it? Uh, I'm forgetting the word. Yeah, there, there are some pretty far out ideas, some pretty... Oh my god, I cannot English today. There are some pretty... Yeah, I completely forgot the word. Ambitious, that's the word I was looking for, ambitious. There are some pretty ambitious ideas I have. And we'll see if I have the skill and the time to implement them. So, as, as again... Follow me on Twitter and Instagram, I forgot to say that at the beginning, and I will see you guys then. Bye-bye.